In the coming weeks, the Melbourne Chess Club will host the 2015 Australian Women's Masters Chess Tournament. The tournament is part of an annual Australian Summer Circuit, which features the Australian Masters, the Australian Championship, the Australian Women's Masters, and a number of other side events. I'm Candidate Master Gary Becker, and during the tournament, we will be broadcasting all games live to the web, and I'll also present regular video highlights. But before then, let's take a look at the inaugural 2013 Australian Women's Masters Tournament. That event was an eight player round robin featuring the top seeds, Catherine Jarrick, Alana Chibnall, Megan Setia Booty, and improving player, Letitia Simmons. In the first two rounds, Jarek, Setia Booty, and Simmons all got off to a perfect two out of two start. In round three, Setia Booty played Jarek. Let's take a look at their encounter. Megan Setia Booty, playing with the white pieces, opened with the exchange variation of the French defence. That line is often considered a drawish variation because of the symmetrical positions which result, and this game was no exception. After 14 moves, the players reached this position with Jarek to play. The game continued. Knight f4, queen c2, g6, rook fe1, rook a e8, knight e5. White's knight is extremely well placed and must be removed. So knight d7, knight takes d7, queen takes d7, queen d2, queen g4. Black brings her queen over to the king side and sets up chances of an attack on that wing, perhaps with the idea of the pawn advance h5, um, or possibly with queen g5, exposing a discovered attack after knight h3 check. So after queen g4, white continued f3. Well, that slightly weakens the king side. The game continued queen g5, king h1 sidestepping that discovered attack. h5, knight f1, h4, rook a d1, king g7, knight e3, knight h5, queen f2, f5, and black just continues building up momentum on the king side. Knight c2, knight f4, and now white gets careless, pushing the pawn b3. Black continues forcefully with rook e1, check. Rook takes e1, knight d3, forking the rook and queen. Queen e3, white's only way to avoid the loss of the exchange. Queen takes e3, rook takes e3, and now Jarek continues actively with knight c1, attacking white's queenside pawns. Knight b4, defending the a-pawn. a5, driving the knight away. And now a mistake by white, knight d3. Both Carlson and Anand commented in interviews after their recent World Championship match that mistakes don't happen by themselves, they are induced because of constant pressure. Here, Black's pressure has taken its toll. White probably would have been better to try and hold on with Rook e1, a takes b4, Rook takes c1, Rook a8, c takes b4, Rook a takes a2, but with both rook b2 and king f6 coming, I think black stands better, as it was in the game after knight d3. Black missed her chance to win immediately with the move f4, and after rook e7 check king f6, white has nothing better than to give up the exchange with knight takes c1, king takes e7. However, Black missed that opportunity and continued knight takes d3, exchanging knights and aiming to take control of the e-file after rook takes d3, rook e8, threatening mate, king g1, 
rook e2 attacking the a pawn a3 rook a2 a4 and now after rook a3 the attack along the third rank ensures that black will win a pawn rook e3 king f7 just keeping the rook out of black's camp f4 aiming to win black's h pawn rook takes b3 rook h3 and here black could play b5 aiming to promote on the queen side but continued instead with king f6 then after rook takes h4 now black did continue with b5 and after a takes b5 c takes b5 king f1 a4 king e1 a3 and white resigned as the a pawn is going to promote an impressive win by Catherine Jarrick in round four Jarek won her game while joint leader Simmons drew with Seti Abudi. In round five, Jarek was held to a lengthy draw by Simmons and Alana Chibnall played an exciting Schliemann defence with the black pieces against Seti Abudi's Spanish to reach the following position. Megan Seti Abudi with the white pieces has just played Queen A3. Alana Chibnall replied Rook H6 and after Bishop G4. It appears that white has won a pawn because the queen is tied to the defence of the rook on f8. However, Chibnall continued queen takes g4, allowing queen takes f8 check, king h7, and now the threat is knight to f3 check. White sidestepped that with king h1, knight to f3 regardless. And here Seti Abudi blundered, perhaps in time trouble with g takes f3. Probably her best defence was queen to b8, defending the h2 square so that after rook takes h2 check, queen takes h2, knight takes h2, king takes h2, white has two rooks and a pawn for the queen and a relatively equal position. But returning to the game, after g takes f3, e takes f3, rook to g1 defending the mate, rook takes h2 check, king takes h2, and queen h4 mate. A nice win for Alana Chibnall. In the penultimate round, Alana Chibnall got a winning position against tournament leader Catherine Jarrick but Jarek was able to complicate matters and Chibnall was only able to draw. In the final round, Simmons and Chibnall battled it out for second place, with Catherine Jarek needing only a draw to secure at least equal first. In the battle for second, Chibnall switched openings to the Petrov or Russian game and sacrificed an exchange to reach the following position. In this position, Letitia Simmons with the white pieces played knight f4 and Alana Chibnall replied rook takes f4 sacrificing the rook for knight and pawn to break through on the king side after g takes f4 rook takes f4 f3 Chibnall continued knight f6 missing the chance to win with the stronger continuation e takes f3 black is now threatening rook g4 check king f2 and rook g2 check with a nasty skewer but after queen h2 rook g4 check white is still in big trouble after king h1 and queen f6 renewing the threat of rook takes h4 with a decisive breakthrough but returning to the game after knight f6 White returned the favour, missing her chance to defend with Queen G2. She instead played F takes E4, 
There were no further mistakes by Alana Chibnall. She finished up with rook g4 check, king h1, rook takes h4, king g1, rook g4 check, king h1, perhaps hoping for a draw by repetition. Notice, however, that after king f2, that only leads to disaster with queen h2 check, king e3, rook g3, and now either king f4 or rook f3, rook takes f3, king takes f3, and that results in the loss of white's queen. So, back to the position after king h1, queen g3, and now white must give up her queen to avoid rook h4 mate. Queen h2, rook h4, queen takes h4, queen takes h4, check. King g2, queen g4, check. King h1, and now knight takes e4, and the knight joins the attack with a decisive effect. King h2, queen g3, check. King h1, knight f2, check. Rook takes f2, queen takes f2, and white resigned. Another nice win by Alana Chibnall. In the final game between Jarek and Sarah Anton, that was a nail biter. Anton played bravely, sacrificing a piece for three pawns and an attack, taking the fight right up to tournament leader Catherine Jarek. Anton reached an ending with a fourth pawn for the piece and two menacing past pawns that threatened to break through. But Anton overpressed and allowed Jarek to simplify. She rounded up the pawns and won the game. A fitting finish for Jarek's tournament, winning the event and conceding only two draws out of the seven rounds played. So, the final cross table was as follows. I'm looking forward to presenting further highlights from the Australian Women's Masters and forthcoming Australian Summer Circuit events over the coming weeks. Thank you for joining me. Until next time, here are some photos from the 2013 event.